You're listening <clears throat> to the New Orleans Talk Network, the Church Without Walls Foundation, hosted by Reverend D. Dunn. A Church Without Walls Foundation is a live call-in talk show, and we deal with issues concerning the family, the church, and the community. We are so happy of our listening audience that have chosen to listen to us today. Uh, before we get started, we would like to again send our condolences out to our friend Thomas Tobias on the passing of his brother, Minister um, T.C. Tobias. Uh, he was laid to rest on this Saturday. So we want you all to know that we are praying for you and with you. And we are, we are praying that God will give you some peace. We know that he was a man of God, and that's all we need to know, amen, is that he loved the Lord and that the Lord loved him. So we're also praying for his wife, uh, Patricia uh, Tobias. So, and we're asking our listening audience to keep them in prayer. And not only them, but all of the bereaved uh, of the land that we come in contact with, that, that we are familiar with. Uh, Charles, you want to say anything about anybody before we get started? Yeah, just to let y'all know, thank our listening audience, especially all those that were on the last time. And also Willie Jones. And uh, my son, Charles Jr., who he said that he sometimes be working if he misses us uh, during the day, he say he program us a little later. He catch us on YouTube, and I love my son. You know, uh, always good when you know your son paying attention to what you're doing. So, shout out to him. And I think that's a good thing too because we have such a great listening audience, and we <coughs> have people that uh, whether they call in or not, they are listening. And I would like to say this to our listening audience. Uh, Charles said this early on uh, at the beginning when we uh, started hosting the show. He said this show is for you, the community, you, the listening audience. And we would like for you uh, to give us a call and, and perhaps some topics that you would like to talk about. Uh, something that we would like to bring on the show that is an interest to you because this is a community network and we want to deal with issues that you are interested in hearing and not just issues that we want to talk about. So we definitely welcome your input on our show, The Church Without Walls uh, foundation because we want to hear from you. You are the ones that's listening. You are the ones also that have mm -hmm. a concern within your family, within the church, and within the community. So we want to hear from you. We, we want to hear what you want to talk about. I know uh, one of my fr big listeners, my friend BJ, said that she want to talk about mental illness. I think yeah. that's a great topic to talk about. So as soon as we can get her uh, within the studio, because she does this, uh, she wrote a book about it, and we would like to talk about that because truly uh, that's a big thing within the family, within the church, and also <coughs> within the community when you are dealing with uh, mental illness. So there are other issues that you may be concerned about that we would love to put out uh, on. Um, so you can give us a call and uh, or text us or whatever, and we would love to hear from you about some topics that, uh, that, mm -hmm. that is of an interest to you. Because remember what y'all said, this is your network, this is your show, not our show. We are just hosting. But this belongs to you, the people that are listening in. You are listening to the New Orleans Talk Network, a church without walls foundation. We are streaming live on Facebook. You can go to the New Orleans Talk Network uh, and, and download.
download us, uh, Church Without Walls Foundation, and you can see us live. We're live streaming. Today, we're going to talk about being falsely accused, being falsely accused. You can get in on the conversation by calling 504 341 8255, being falsely accused. And, and let me say this before we get into our conversation. We're so happy to have Sharon with us, uh, Pastor Prophetess Charlene Duforce. Uh, her husband is the overseer, Carol T. Duforce Sr., and they are with the Living Witness Ministries. So, uh, Pastor Prophetess. Charlene Duforce, we're so happy uh, to have you sharing in the studio with us. Our good friend, um, Sister Denisha Robinson, is not with us. Um, she's doing some work of the Lord. So she said that if God willing, she would be with us on next week. So to get into our topic, today we are talking about being falsely accused and you can get in on the conversation by calling 504-341-8255. Charles, let me say this. These are the words of Jesus. And Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 11, he said, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you so jesus makes this statement about people falsely um accusing you and, and speaking evil and he said, and people do this because you're saved. That's why he's saying falsely for my sake. Because if you weren't saved, they wouldn't be saying that for the sake of Christ. But notice how he also tells us to handle this. He said rejoice. See, I'm not going to rejoice because people are saying evil things about me if what they're saying is true. But I'm going to rejoice if they falsely accuse me and say things against me that I know and my father know is is not right he said because now the way I handle this he said rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven now being falsely accused and calling somebody out for what they are is two different things uh before the show prophetess um Charlene uh, Duforce and I were talking, and we were talking about it's the difference between calling a spade a spade and falsely accusing somebody. Mm -hmm. When you falsely accuse somebody, you really don't have the facts. You, you are going on assumption. And one thing about assumption, it has gotten a lot of us in a lot of trouble. You should only talk what you know. Even in a code of law, it, it tells you, uh, do you declare to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So if you tell the truth, you're not falsely accusing, but if you are really doing something and, and you know it's wrong and, and, and people know it's wrong, you've seen it, you've witnessed it for yourself, well, that's not falsely accusing. And, and, and so you don't need to be rejoicing over that. But you need to be rejoicing if you are falsely being accused and prosecuted for righteousness sake or for doing what's right. They are people that will stand up and, and children of God should stand up in the family, in the church, and in the community for what's right. If you see something that's not right, you should correct that as Amen. a child of God. But if, and then if men revile you and persecute you for that, then the Bible say rejoice. But don't be rejoicing if you are guilty of doing stuff that's not right. 
So there is a difference. You are listening to the New Orleans Talk <coughs> Network, a church without walls foundation, hosted by Reverend D. Dunn and Charles Stewart. You can get in on the conversation by calling 504-341-8255. Again, we're so happy to have Pastor Prophetess Charlene Duforts with Living Witness Ministry sharing with us. Charles, uh, uh, or Prophetess, either one of y'all can get in on this conversation. Well, I'm going to yield to our special guest, because I see her over there smiling. <laughs> it looks like I see she, she uh, got a nose of Bible, so she read it. So I I want her to come in in her own special way. And have Prophet. a word. Go ahead. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I want to thank you all for allowing me to come on the show today um, to speak and um, to just do what God wants us to do this morning. Um, thank you for allowing me to be here. Well, we're so glad that you are definitely sharing with us. Uh, Charles, what you have to say about well, our you know, um, topic? When you are uh, being accused of anything, and you think about it over the years, I know many of us know that a lot of people are uh, in jail today. A lot of people, matter of fact, is in their grave on the just on the sex of uh, being falsely accused. My understanding that uh, uh, sixty percent of young men that locked up in jail today is is actually is innocent. They are. Uh, they falsely accused because of a system. And when you accuse someone, and notice when you say accuse, well, that kind of means that you're not sure, but, you know, you think the person is actually guilty or something, you know. And uh, I know uh, I don't seen fights happen on the kind of someone accused someone of doing something. That they ain't had, a, you know, like uh, they ain't even had a clue what the person talking about. I've been accused of certain things that I ain't even know. Like they accused me of being rich, how you know, like Charles got money hid in Atlanta and had FBI uh, chasing me off because I had money and I ain't had a clue. <laughs> but I was accused of that, which I kind of wish it were right there, you know. <laughs> but I was falsely accused, so. This is what's going on uh, right now uh, as we speak and sit here this morning. Like, if you listen to the, the uh, you know, the people that are running for office on um, lower level, you know, state level, and on the national level, president race, uh, one candidate accused the one of, of this, and I mean, they not even deal with no issues. They only accusing each other, you know, of email, you know, like, and uh, I never seen a, you know, a campaign you know, in, in, in my time that where uh, election dominates, I think they've been dealing with uh, Secretary of State uh, Clinton. I think they've been dealing with another email maybe about two years now, and I don't know what more they, you know, I think the other day they came with some new allegation that. False accused. I don't know. It could be. But the thing that I don't understand is uh, they say it may not concern her. That's what confused me. So, But that make the news every day. To me, I want to think that the, uh, the, new, the news media and the, and the people on national level, they playing game with the public. I mean, they should have... Uh, Mr. Trump and Mr. Clinton, they should have them before the microphone saying what they're going to do to make people live better. And that's not, they're not discussing that. I mean, if you ever tell me, I turn on, they're talking about email. I mean, you know, uh, lock her up, you know, and then she's saying that he don't, he hate women. I mean, you know, so, I mean, it's go on and on. I mean, everything to me, when that word false, it's every, the whole country, is, it seems to me, is so many people, they, 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 they deal with what's false, they don't deal with reality. 
Well, you know, Charles, in, in, in politics, what's real is that that is politics. <coughs> you know, a friend of mine mm -hmm. used to say it was called politrick. Uh, in, in, in politics, you uh, put yourself out there, and that's the name of the game to get uh, – their candidate elected, this is what they do. So what, what actually happens, they put those accusations out there in order for their candidate to get elected. Now, I think what happens to a people is that they need to decipher what's true and what's not. Mm -hmm. and, and I think and make, you know, their mm -hmm. decisions because uh, if you are going to be a leader of a person, no matter uh, who that person is, I think that being a leader of a person uh, or of people, you should be in a situation where, you know, you have some um, <coughs> type of lifestyle uh, conducive to that. So as a result of that, uh, people need to figure out for themselves uh, you know, what's true and what's false. But when you falsely accuse people, this is where the issue comes in. Uh, Prophet Charlene, would you like to have a word on that? Well, I was just thinking when Charles was speaking, I agree that the important thing we need to think about um, during the election is that the candidates need to stick to the issues. Yes. Uh, the people out there want to know that our next leader is going to be one capable of taking care of our country. Mm -hmm. What's in the past is in the past. All we have to deal with is the now. And, and we have to deal with the issues. Uh, if I may, I, I wrote down just a few little things I was thinking about when I was thinking okay. about this today. We live in a country that is not ruled by dictatorship, right? but by our rights to voice our opinions. Mm -hmm. One way we can do that here in America is to exercise our freedom mm -hmm. on election day to vote. I believe every American citizen of age should exercise that right. If something is wrong, with the leaders of the country, then when given the opportunity to vote, our vote can change that. We are given rights as Americans to vote, but it's God who decides who gets, the elect, who gets elected. And Romans 13, 1, we're told, let every soul be subject <coughs> to the governing authorities. Mm -hmm. For there is no authority except from God. All right. Mm -hmm. And that the authorities that exist are appointed by God. If our elected leaders turn out to be ungodly, mm -hmm. then it probably means that God has placed our country under judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, we can wow. go to the polls and we can vote. And a lot of times, and, and we should, as Christians, we should pray mm -hmm. and ask the Lord to give us the leadership and the direction in which way he wants us to go. But that's our God-given right. right. But America gives us the right to vote. But God allows us to do so because of the free choice he's mm -hmm. given us as people and when we go in the polls to vote sometimes we don't always get the elected official that we want, we want. Right. in office but be assured that for one purpose or another God is appointing the leader he wants over this country I pray and, it, uh, and there have been times in the past I did not get my candidate I voted for but I pray for the candidate that is in the office, and that's what our responsibility as Christians is supposed to do, right. that we uphold them in prayer time for the leadership because 
they are those that are over us mm -hmm. to protect us. And something else I was thinking about, you know, the government is working for the people, not the people for the government. Right. Therefore, if the government is working for us, it's their responsibility to do what they need to do to protect us, to provide for the nation. Um, we have, our, our nation right now is sorely in need economically, uh, spiritually. Uh, there's a lot of downfalls in that area. And this is the issue that our candidates have to face. Right. They, they need to stick to this, these subjects. What are you going to do for the nation right. to make it a better nation? Right. You know, um, that, that is so true. And I think that from a, a spiritual perspective, we need to be in prayer that whatever way God takes this, not what we, not the way we want it to go, but however God wants it to go. At this time, we need to go to break. You're listening to the New Orleans Talk <laughs> Network, a church without walls, hosted by Reverend D. Dunn and Charles Stewart. We are talking today about being falsely accused. We'll be right back after the break. We're back. You're listening to the New Orleans Talk Network, a church without walls, hosted by Reverend D. Dunn and Charles Stewart. Today we are talking about being falsely accused. Um, we want to talk about, uh, we were before the break talking about being falsely accused within this political system because Everybody is really watching the election because the election is very important to us as to determine who will be our next world leader. And one of the things that came up that the Republican Party uh, brought up was that because of their values, that they find it very hard to allow their young children to watch the debate because of all the false accusations or the accusations, I don't know if all of them were false or not, but because of the accusations that were being thrown out there as opposed to sticking with the issues because their job is to be our leaders or to serve us or to govern us, but it, the way they were doing the debates, accusing one another back and forth, back and forth, uh, many, not only the Republican Party, but many people felt that um, it wasn't something that they were uh, very settled with watching their young children watch the debate. Uh, today, uh, Pastor Prophetess Charlene Dufour with the Living Witness Ministries is sharing with us, and she wanted to bring something in about herself and what they're doing, and, and go ahead, Prophetess. Thank you, Pastor D. Um, I think about the family unit, that God thought it was so important that he set up the first family unit. And when you have a breakdown in the family unit, then the country becomes chaotic mm -hmm. because the family unit, I look at it, is what holds things together. You pray together. You spend time together as a family. And in the family unit is where the children learn the, the principles, the basis of how they're supposed to act when they become adults and that's the responsibility of the parents, not the school systems, not the government, but the responsibility of the parents in the family unit to teach this to the children. In my husband and I's ministry, um, we have seen over time 
that unfortunately um, in the divorce courts, a lot of the Christian people is almost outnumbering the secular world Wow! in separation and divorce. And biblically, God gives us the guidelines for marriage in the family unit. So in 2008, um, we, God mandated, uh, commissioned my husband and I, Bishop Carroll, to start what's called a rebuilder's ministry. And what we do in a rebuilder's ministry, we do this uh, wherever we're invited or uh, wherever the Lord opens up the doors, we do conferences and seminars. And we teach them according to the Bible God's principles for marriages and relationships. We don't just teach to married couples, but we also teach to single people how they can find the mate that God has intended for them biblically. Uh, the Bible tells us not to be unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. That means that we should be seeking God according to his word, how he wants us to find that mate. And if we're in a, a marriage or a relationship, I believe that God is a God of restor restoration. So whatever area you're in right now, God can restore it if we put our full trust in it. This year, we will be hosting uh, our conference. It will be November 17th, 18th, and the 20th. And the place is 433 Avenue K in Marrero, Louisiana. The times uh, will be 7 p.m. on the 17th and the 18th. And Sunday the 20th will start at 3 p.m. We also do um, on the Sunday at 3 p.m. after the teaching session, we do what's called a marriage vow renewal service. Uh, that's after the last session. So if you're interested, I'll give you the phone number that you can reach. Uh, it's Pastor Prophetess Charlene Duforce at 504-325-9104 for more information on this conference um, and uh, directions, whatever it is you need. Uh, please call because we feel that, and God feels that this is very important for the family structure to stay together. That's right. I agree with that because on this show, you know, one of the things that we've always said that God first instituted the family, the church came secondary to the family. And one thing I do believe uh, in, in my home, you know, in my heart, that the, the many of the problems that we are facing in life today, we are facing because there's not enough morals being taught in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand that you can teach a kid or, you know, a father and a mother, but they need to be fathers and mothers also. And maybe sometime they need a little help to show them what they are supposed to do. Amen. You know, I, I say this in the family. Uh, children, you know, we, we have gotten to the point where we think, you know, just throw some money on them, buy them some Jordan shoes and, and put some clothes on them, buy them a new car. But you know one thing I, I have learned in life when it comes down to a family whether it's the husband or wife or the children or whatever, they want time. They want quality yeah. time. And even if the children <laughs> are going in a different direction, I think that sitting down doing that old time talking and showing them the right way, I believe in my heart that, you know, this is what God wants and show them the way that God wants them to go. We are talking today about being falsely accused. How many times in the family that people falsely accuse you in the family and you don't even know? You're mad with the family and don't even know the lie they have told. And to them, let, let me bring this in, to them it may not be a lie. Maybe that's the way they perceived it. So if you never sat down with a family and discussed that, 
then you don't really know if, you know, uh, where they got it from. And, and I think that shutting down of communication is what causes so much false stuff and, and accusations that's being uh, put out there against people. You are listening to the New Orleans Talk Network, a Church Without Walls Foundation, hosted by Reverend D. Dunn and Charles Stewart. And we are so happy to be sharing with us Pastor Prophetess Charlene Duforts. You can get in on the conversation by calling 504-341-8255. We're talking about being falsely accused. Charles, you look like you're about to bust. What you no, have to say I, about I know, that? I'm just uh, enjoying it. Um, uh, you know, what y'all are saying, and I agree so much about the family. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, I make people laugh when I say it. When you, someone accused you, you know, I say a lot of times people come to church upset and angry because uh, what somebody accused them. Like, uh, you know, uh, I was telling some people that I used to belong to a, a church and they had a lot of members there and a lot of members sometimes by me was they had deacon at the church so quite natural a lot of people come to church they would talk to me whatever their problem was they figured I had a pastor there you know I, you know they figured I was good with everybody so a lot of time you know they would come to church and they say you know brother Charles you need to let Rev know this and Sister Thompson said this about me and I'm a, I moved down three seats and you know, I would start to thinking when they would tell you, I said, well, who are you talking about? He said, oh, you know, say, you know, uh, I just, I'm going to use another name. I'm not going to use a special name. Let's say it was Sister James said this about me. Sister James said that about you, yeah. And I said, you come to church all upset and mad by Sister James. My Sister James done put all the garbage on you by accusing you, saying this. And I said, Sister Jane, I said, in church, she having a wonderful time. She shouting at me, and you sitting here all frowning yes. up and mad. <laughs> so, you know, so all the time I tell people that you got to be careful how you deal with people because people put all their garbage on you and weight you down. You sitting in church mad with the whole world. And the person that started those uh, rumors, they in church just as happy they like it. They can be there dancing in church. Oh, come on, Ray. You sitting there mad. Wow. <laughs> I was thinking when uh, Brother Charles was saying that, you know, the scripture tells us count it joy when we're accused for the sake of Christ, yeah. when we're being falsely accused for his sake. Mm -hmm. And when I thought when I read that, I thought, God, how can I rejoice and be joyous when someone is falsely accusing me of something? And then he placed it in my heart to think that I'm in good company, that yeah. when I'm doing what God tells me to do, yeah. and the church or the secular world falsely accuses me, mm -hmm. I'm in very good company because yeah. they accused Christ. Yeah. Yeah. They accused him of things, just just one thing, you know, doing the things he was doing by the prince of the devils, Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. So when we're accused, we're in really good company. Yes, you know, you you and I were talking before the show, and, and one thing that you said, which is very biblically sound, is that, you know, Satan is the accuser. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when God asked uh, Satan what was he doing, he said, I'm going to and for the earth seeking whom what, uh, seeking whom I shall devour or who I should eat up, you know. And he said, well, have you considered my servant? So that kind of tells us that that uh, in this life, being a child of God, that these things are going to happen because Satan is always there uh, as the accuser doing things uh, to really, and when they say devour, mean to really de trying to destroy us. Mm -hmm. And, and and that's written. So don't get so angry uh, because of these things that are written. You are listening to the New Orleans Talk Network, a church without walls foundation hosted by Reverend D. Dunn and Charles Stewart. We have to go to a commercial break right now, and we'll be right back.
We're back. You're listening to the New Orleans Talk Network, a church without walls foundation hosted by Reverend D. Don and Charles Stewart. You know, we were, uh, before we went to the break, we were talking about, you know, I assumed uh, have gotten many people falsely accused. And one of the things um, that we found out that uh, being falsely accused actually sometimes stigmatizes everybody. For example, if one church falls, uh, whether the accusations are true or false, it doesn't matter. But if that church falls, sometimes people will stigmatize all churches. If, if, if the Baptist church had a problem uh, with their pastor, then they would say all Baptist pastors are that way, which is falsely accusing all Baptist preachers. Or if something happened to a pastor, then the, uh, you let, let's say money got missing. Well, all them preachers steal the money. And, and I think that that's really being falsely accused when you stigmatize people because of the action or because of somebody being falsely accused, Charles. Yeah, well, you're always going to get that. Uh, deal. Like you said, one pastor, uh, say one church do something, I would be Pentecostal, Baptist. They say all churches are like that, which is not true. You know, like, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, being in the business of a contractor, uh, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, Brother Stewart, I was thinking about calling you, but I didn't want to call you because the last contractor like you did a job for me, I wasn't satisfied. And I said, well, how could you so think that with me? He said, well, you know, he said, just a contractor like you, I just don't like de dealing with, I'd rather call somebody else. And I said, well, what happened? I said, now, you said contractor like me don't want to deal with me on the sake of what someone else did. And I'm assuming he was saying by me being African American, I don't want to deal with deal with you, I already called a white contract. Now, this uh someone, African-American, telling me this. He don't want to deal with me because someone else didn't do a job the way uh, he, he thought it should go. I said, to make my point that I'm making here, <coughs> ask, you, ask them one question. Have you ever went to Walmart that they gave you an item, sold you something you weren't satisfied? Most people buy meat from Walmart and not satisfied with it. They take it back. But you still go back. So my point that I'm making, you can go to uh, Rouse's, any store that they may have, they're going to sell you something that you're not satisfied with. If you go to Home Depot, Walmart, or any store, uh, loads of something you're going to buy that you wasn't pleased, something didn't work on that, that a screw missing. But you still go back to uh, Walmart, but yet and still... When it comes to somebody that really want to help them, they find a fault say, I can't deal with you because of a previous uh, experience you had with somebody else. So to me, I'm saying that's false. But one thing that I want to make a, uh, a, 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 a personal note to when uh, Reverend Don brought it about, uh, about Joe, I want to be in that number with Joe for one simple reason. When God said, have you consider my servant Joe? So I just, boy, to me, you a bad dude if you can be considered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that means God know you're going to stand up for him. That's it. Don't care what the rain, the storm come, don't care what come up. God figure you may get beat up, you may get knocked down, but he know you're going to get right back up. Right. And that's why if you consider God consider you, you're a bad dude. So I just want to be considered by God, <laughs> you know, the same way Joe called. He said, have you considered my servant Joe? Because one thing, he know that Joe will weather the storm. So I want to be in that number. I just want to be considered. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you know, so brother, me, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Um, Sister BJ sent me uh, a text. <laughs> and, you know, some of our listening audiences, when they can't 
uh, call in, they will definitely text us. So listen to what Sister BJ said. Uh, you're right, uh, saying that I believe if we would take the accusers and pray for them, it would not affect us as much as God uh, will give us guidance on how to handle the situation and the individual. And Sister BJ, we do uh, much agree with that. You know, if I'm being falsely accused, I just look at you and I laugh about it. Especially if now if it's the truth, Charles, I'm not laughing so heavy. But if it is not the truth, I just kind of laugh about lies because I know eventually God is going to bring that situation out. Prophet is going. Oh, I was just going to comment on what uh, Brother Charles said. Uh, he said the person chose not to get him to do the job because of his race. That, as a people, sometimes people tend to. St that's a stereotype. Yes. They'll say, oh, I, I won't uh, do it this way because you're a woman or you're a man or because of the color of your skin. And you're stereotyping the person. You're not looking at them. You're, pu you're putting them in a group and not looking at them as an individual and what the abilities are that God has gifted every human being on this earth with. We all at least have one gift. Right. And we should look, uh, always sh should be looking at the good in people rather than the bad. And something God's been walking me in lately is the spirit of grace. And if I try to operate in grace, which is hard sometimes when people are accusing you to, especially when they're accusing you to your face, to smile at them and, and operate out of grace when you really don't want to, you know, be in grace at that moment, if you get my drift. But if you operate in grace, then healing can begin. And this is certainly what this nation needs, a worldwide, you know, a, a nationwide healing. Mm -hmm. We need to operate in the grace of God. That's true, because, again, accusations are going to come. People are going to say things that can really hurt your heart. But I do believe in my heart being a Christian, being a child of God. You know, we, we had that old saying years ago about sticks and stones may break my bones, but talk will never hurt me. But then, yeah, it's not true. Talk will hurt you, and, and, and it can really tear down your spirit. It can really put things out there on you that's just not true. But I have to agree with, with Sister BJ and with the, the Christians uh, that one thing about it, if you pray, God will uncover that and the truth will prevail. Mm -hmm. So if it's, if it's not truth, it'll come out. God will do that for you as being a child of God. But I just feel, you know, in, in our life, being so falsely accused, even if somebody in your family have gone bad or going to jail or whatever, then they want to say, you know, your whole family ain't no good. And that's just yeah. not right. That's false accusations. Or if you live uh, in a certain um, area, they would say, uh, you know, all them people live over there and this is what they do. That's not right. Let me say this to uh, one of our listening audience, uh, part of our listening audience, uh, Kathy Allen, um, you said to us this morning, you know, you said, how are you doing today? Well, I'm just going to tell you, we're doing fine. And we are so glad uh, to see that you commented. For those of our listening audience, we are streaming live on Facebook. Uh, you can send us a comment. We can see it. And, and we will, even if you can't call in, we can see your comments. I'm looking at the board right now, and there are at least, Charles, over 350 people listening to us at this moment. And we are so glad uh, that you have chosen to listen to the New Orleans Talk Network, a church without walls foundation. But don't forget what I said earlier on the show. This is your network. If you want us to talk about something or bring in a comment or whatever, just go and message us. We can we can see uh, the, your comments, your 
uh, messaging us and things of that nature, and we really welcome that. Uh, we, are, we are not here to talk about issues that we want to talk about. We want to talk about issues that are of an interest to you, dealing with the family, the church, and the community. Uh, I do want to say this. Um, there's early voting, and, and, and I heard Prophetess Charlene Dufour say that, you know, it is your right. It is your given right as a person um, to go out and to exercise your right. So I want to say this to the people in our community. It's your right. Pray about it. Go vote. We are not here to tell you who to vote for. That's between you and your God. But go out and definitely exercise your right to vote um, and vote because this is very, very important uh, dealing with the community. Well, Charles, our hour is almost up. And we would like to thank um, uh, for sharing with us Pastor Prophetess Charlene Dufour for sh with the Living Witness Ministries. Uh, the overseer is um, Carol T. Dufour. We are so glad that uh, she's thought enough of us to come and share in the studio with us today. Uh, so, Charles, what you have to say? Well, I would like to thank our listening audience again for um, for uh, listening to us today. We know that we love you, and we know that this is the fastest hour in show business. So we thank you, we love you, and always remember, there's no such thing as being half dead. If you're dead, you're dead. God bless you. Love you. Thank you for sharing. Sister Robinson, if the Lord say the same, we'll see you next week. God bless you. Love y'all.